Hey guys, before we hop into your video, I wanted to tell you guys about my new partnership with BetterHelp. If you haven't heard of it, it's an online resource in which you can find your very own friendly local neighborhood therapist, no matter where you are in the world. You sign up and within 24 hours, they match you with a licensed therapist that's right for you. And you can talk to your counselor every week via phone or video chat, and you also have the opportunity to text them in between sessions. As most of you guys know, I am also a licensed professional as well as a mental health advocate. And sometimes in these readings, very in-depth topics come up that are very intricately related to mental health. And it's for that reason that I offer this resource to you guys. And if you know anyone that can benefit from them or if you yourself can benefit from them, I suggest you take advantage of them. The information to sign up will be in the description box below. But let's go ahead and get into your reading. Hey guys, welcome to, I can't even say that this has a name. Uh, it's a collective Aquarius season video, but disclaimer, this is not um, my usual protocol at all. I don't ever, I don't, I don't think I've ever done a video on um, a particular signs uh, season. Um, I usually do energy updates on things, but I don't think I've ever done it in this format. But the only reason why I am doing it is because of the download that I got about so many different things. Those of you who are Aquarius or have Aquarius in your chart, and please forgive me if I am scattered because it's a whole bunch of information that I have to share. And I'm trying to make sure I keep everything concise because I don't want this video to be exhaustive or too long. But um, I also get to utilize myself as an example with all of this. But um, I did Aquarius's reading on yesterday, right? And those of you who are Aquarius or have it in your chart, cross watch somebody. Um, you guys know the whole um, like context of that video, so to speak. And um, those of you who watched it in the extended, <laughs> because uh, I was even more open in the extended, um, just talking about what that energy was doing to me. So the thing is, is after I finished the reading, because, um, you know, I, I always pick up on energies. And I mean, for each sign, it's, it's different from time to time. Um, I know some months back, um, I used to tune in like really heavy and, um, you know, get very like in-depth intuitive messages for you guys, but that just was not time efficient. But, um, you know, I, I pick up on things, but it's just what happened on yesterday. It just didn't sit right with me because granted, of course, you know, there's a, a big deal, um, a great deal, excuse me, of, um, Aquarians that are subscribed, I'm sure. And, you know, um, all of us have Aquarius somewhere in our chart. Um, but it's just the intensity of it. It, it. it felt a bit much for me. So I elected to not record anyone else on yesterday. And I just decided to, you know, kind of meditate on it. I was keeping an eye on the comments just to get an idea of, you know, how people were receiving it. If, you know, the energy I was picking up was literal or if it's just an energy signature, you know, of different, you know, manifestations of things in 3D or whatever. And, um, you know, I just kind of prayed and just waited to hear from spirit about it. Now, the download I got in reference to what I picked up in Aquarius's energy, I realized and why I'm doing an Aquarius season video is this has, I'm not going to say it has nothing to do with Aquarius, but just like it was a young lady, um, who's a Pisces. Um, I want to give you a shout out, <laughs> um, who commented on, um, the video and she was saying that, um, she was in prayer, um, in reference to getting, uh, she was asking spirit for a sign and she was specifically asking spirit to receive, um, a message from me and, um, she's a Pisces. And when I posted the Aquarius video, it inadvertently ended up being exactly what it is that she needed to hear, um, for her situation. I'm so sorry, y'all. I want to give her a shout out because... Just reading her comment, 
Her spirit just felt so sweet to me. Where is it? I probably should have pulled this up ahead of time. I'm so sorry, y'all. <laughs> when I get my mindset on something, I become very dedicated in finding it. But um, I don't see her comment. Oh, okay, here it is. Oh, man, and it would be a name I'm going to butcher. Tattoo Sulejamani? Um, I may have butchered your name. I'm so sorry. I love your face. I butcher everyone's name. But anywho, but um, that for me, her comment and why I wanted to mention her name and acknowledge her is because when I saw her comment, that was confirmation for me of the download I was starting to receive in reference to this energy. And the whole thing is, is that um, the message that I got for Aquarius in its most basic energetic essence, like energy signature essence, that is relevant to the entire collective, right? So throughout the night, <laughs> I started to see from like how I was telling Aquarius in the beginning of the video, uh, um, how like I had so much stuff to share with them and I was confused as to why, um, that energy came up like it did because all of the things that I had to share with Aquarius, it literally dates back to the reading I did for them at the end of January. Um, and I'm going to get into all of that, but it, it's kind of blowing my mind at how <laughs> intricately connected everything is from the dream that I had and the message that I had in the dream. Those of you who didn't watch the Aquarius video, I had a dream a couple of days ago and spirit said, um, with this intention, I hereby create. And I saw a vision of a person standing and it was a beam of energy coming out of them. It goes into an infinity symbol and then comes back around into the person. So in so many words, it's saying how our intentions create things like our experiences and so on and so forth. Right. And I discussed that in the reading. But where this relates back to me <laughs> and where I say I end up becoming an example is because in all of this, dude, y'all, all of this ties into the woke book. It ties into what the basis of the woke book is, like speaking of uh, like symbology and, and numerology, things of the sort. Um, what each year talks about and how that translates to, to what's happening now, to the dream that I had, to the actual physical moon cycles, to the reading that I did for this week's energy on Patreon because I do a weekly reading over there. And it's like um, the first three cards that came out in the weekly reading were all in the reverse. And we're like kind of joking with that, but how this relates to me um, and don't be like princess. I always tell you guys that of something that spirit told me to do and I didn't do it <laughs> right with the woke book, there's a page in the woke book that I didn't include. And the reason why I didn't include it is because I was concerned about formatting with Motherfuck Twin Flames. I had so many issues with that book. And luckily with this, I realized like a lot of errors I made, you know, like logistics wise of like formatting and stuff like that. But uh, from doing this book, and it's taught me a lot about where I went wrong logistics wise with motherfuck twin flames. But the whole thing is, is that I didn't want to have to go through that because I'd got the format like perfect in this page that was supposed to be in the woke book. I like this was probably one of the first things I did. I forgot about it. And as I was sending the book to print, it's like spirit ended up doing the same thing that happened with motherfuck twin flames because the hermit effect initially was not in that book. And right before it went to print, I got a download of the last chapter of the book and put it in there. And a similar thing happened for those of you who've received the woke book already. It's the little excerpt that I inserted in the year 2019. 
So it's like that had to be in there. I felt some type of way about that because that download is really heavy. And I was like, I don't know how people are going to receive that. And, you know, my human is just like my ego is literally like, oh, spirit, like you show, like we can't put it on the last page. Like you really won't put it like on the first page, you know. So I did that when I remembered this page that I left out of um, the whole little thing. It's like spirits like, you know, put that in there. And I was like, no, <laughs> I have free will. No, I'm not about to do that. Because my biggest fear is that I had finally got everything perfect. Everything was fine. And I was like, what if I stick this page in here and it throws everything off kilter? And then it's like, I'm starting from ground zero. So I was just like, it ain't no big deal, like whatever, right? But from the information I received last night, I realized just how much of a big deal it is because it relates to the Aquarius reading. It relates to the moon transits. It relates to um, the, the first three cards that came out in the weekly reading and the whole purpose of why it is I'm doing this video, right? So I linked, um, it's a Google Drive link. It's in the description box below. You guys can download it as many times as you want, <laughs> right? And and what the page actually is, the one, I printed out one, but it's, uh, I have notes all on it of stuff that I want to say in here, but I'm going to give you like a little quick flash because <laughs> I got my notes all on it. But um, it's the full moon and new moon phases for the year 2020 because the whole premise of the woke book is like practical, tangible action steps. The last three years prior to 2020, I call those years like years of tribulation. The last year that they had of the same energetic vibrational frequency like the last three years was 2009, which starts this whole decade, right? And that's everything that we go through in the woke book. But the thing that I thought um, was interesting that also came up in um, the Aquarius reading in um, at the end of January was that after I recorded the Aquarius video, Spirit led me to one of my notebooks from 2018, right? And in this notebook, which completely blew my mind, and I don't know what led me to do this. I, I don't know. It, it, clearly, it's just like a download and I'm just writing stuff, but it was so ironic to me that like everything that's happening now, and this is stuff that's like touched on in the woke book, I ended up writing a whole manifesto. And I think I've talked about this in the extended four Aquarius. I ended up writing a whole manifesto on um, like new moon manifestation. And it was around the time for those of you who've been with me for this long, this video is going to end up being long, y'all. Because it's like I'm, I'm giving all of this background disclaimer stuff before I get to these little bullet points because it's so important. But uh, those of you who've been with me um, that long, back in, I believe it was like October of 2018, I did channeled messages for each sign for a new moon reading. And it was like these little narrative stories about each sign. And like I read them at the end of each um, video or whatever. And in that notebook was a couple of the signs um, that I had um, wrote the little things for. But I do remember that, you know, it's like a perforated notebook. So I know some of the signs had fell out. I have no idea where they are. But the reason why I didn't share those last month, because I think the only two that are in this notebook is Capricorn and Aquarius. And I was like, it wouldn't be fair for me to share this with them. And then I can't find the other ones and everyone else wouldn't get it. But <laughs> the dope thing about it is the one for Aquarius is very much intricately related to Aquarius season and everything that's happening now. So it's like that sense of frustration. The reason why I was feeling it so heavily is because it wasn't just the Aquarius collective that I was picking up on. It's the entire collective, right? So it's like the feelings that I was feeling with that in different for different reasons or in different situations and circumstances it's legit what the collective is in, is going through right now and where this makes sense to with this whole thing with the woke book because you guys know some of you do some of you don't the woke book came to me in a dream during the three days that i was sick at the end of december right so when i got up from being sick <laughs> 
I literally had a dream of this book. I thought the idea was insane. And I was like, first of all, that makes absolutely no sense because it's like it's the last week of December. There's no way that I can put a book out that's, God forbid, going back 10 years, right? And that's about 2020 because I'm like, by the time it comes out, no one's going to care. It's like we're going to be totally past like New Year's resolution time. Like This is the whole conversation I'm having with Spirit. But I still was pushed to do it. And it's like, despite what my logic is telling me, it's like, that doesn't make any sense. But again, coming back to why all of this is coming up now and why it's imperative that I'm making this video and telling this to you guys is because all of this stuff leads up into March, right? So in essence, it's like from January up until March, it's like, we're technically in 2020 and I know you can go back like ancient wise it's like the new year really doesn't start until um until March but um it's like literally energetically everyone is still in the same pause energy so those of you who have the woke book you can literally read uh the year 2019 and a lot of the stuff I say in there is exactly what it is that I picked up on in the Aquarius reading. And then for those of you who want more specifiers, it's like all of the mirror years to 2019 and 2009 being one of those, like energetically, it's like 2009, 2016, 2019, and I believe 2010. It's like each of those years gives you like a bullet point specifier of literally all of the energy that I'm picking up on. But I feel the whole reason why all of this happened is because the Aquarius new moon, and I picked out, like I didn't literally pull these cards, I literally just pulled them out of the deck as just like a, a you know, little sign thing for me. But, um, and those of you who kind of want to, see what it is I'm talking about, y'all can click the link in the description box and, you know, pull this up and look at it or print it out or whatever. But the whole reason why that energy came on me so strong is because it's almost as if we have a really dope opportunity right now to utilize these energies that are happening with the moon energy, as well as with the Mercury retrograde that's coming. Um, and I have that date here. Mercury retrograde in Pisces is from February 16th into uh, March 19th. So with Mercury retrograde, you know, we're in this state of self reflection, right? <laughs> so we're like taking a step back. We're looking back. We're seeing what things need to change, whatever, whatever. And it's like this Aquarius new moon, right? That initiated the start of Aquarius season in this full moon that's in Leo. And that's the ninth of this month. It's like these two energies are of utmost importance, right? And the creepy thing about it is the fact that these two energies are what I wrote about in this notebook back in 2018. So it's kind of like it was dope. Because it's like for all the stuff I was sensing, I was like, this is literally the solution to all of this stuff. And what I'm going to do, um, just because, like I said, y'all, I have so much information on this. And I think like for those who don't have the woke book, it would probably break your brain with like trying to go in depth explaining stuff. So I think and I was actually in prayer about that because I wanted to do like a webinar on the woke book and it's like all of this happening inadvertently has given me like all of the information to kind of uh help you guys take advantage of this time so the whole thing is um the whole igniting factor for all of these energies that the collective is dealing with right now and i feel like it's kind of a sense of everything i talked about in the aquarius reading so you may want to watch it it's like a sense of unrest or like self-doubt or, you know, feeling trapped or feeling on pause. You know what I mean? Some people like doubting, like, you know, waiting for other people to get their karma and this stuff isn't working out for you. And it's like, oh my God, am I the one that's getting karma? It's just like all of this craziness that's going on right now, right? But the thing that I'm seeing is, um, let's see, because I took little notes here. Uh, okay. So with the Aquarius season energy, it's like, we're technically purging. That's why all of this stuff is coming to the surface. So a lot of you guys 
that were in the comments that were saying like stuff that you got over it's like it's coming back up and rearing its ugly head and things of the sort and that's because it's coming to the surface to be purged the reason why is because with the new moon that's in Aquarius and I have all this stuff on here y'all that's why it's like I really regret not putting this in the book so it's like I feel kind of silly because I'm like I talked about this in the extended for Aquarius I feel kind of silly because it's just like, I thought that this was like, oh, this is pointless. No one's going to miss it. But it's like, now I get it. And then another thing is like, if we talk about like pathology too, like if we talk about the number four, like with pathology and linking that to zodiac sign, the number four also aligns to the sign of Aquarius. And then we're in a number four year. And then those of you who have the woke book um, for 2020, the theme of this year was a harvest year right and with this little worksheet that i left out it has the full moons and new moons of 2020 and it says 2020 is a collective harvest year i like to think of every moon cycle as the law of the harvest in action new moons are for sowing seeds of intention and full moons are for are for the reaping of those seeds keep this in mind as you work with the lunar energies at work in 2020 right and then I broke it down to the three quarters of the year and the three month increments under each quarter. And then I have the dates um, of each full moon and new moon. And then from the moonology deck, I took um, like the descriptions that they have like for each new moon and full moon. And I have that on the side. Um, so those of you who print that out, you can have that to, you know, have it and add it to your woke book, you know. But um, the thing that I'm seeing is with the new moon in Aquarius, that was an igniter, right? So with this, it says bring love into the situation for the new moon in Aquarius. Now, all the stuff that I have in this manifesto from 2018, and I'm going to read that to y'all for the Aquarius energy, but for each sign, it was a seed of intention that you sow. Bringing it back <laughs> to the dream that I had with this intention, do I hereby create? You see what I'm saying? dude this is freaking insane the synchronicity is abound moving right along so i have written down the aquarius energy has us purging the purge was triggered by the aquarius new moon love equals light right light equals consciousness and that equals aquarius so the seed that was planted within all of us under the new moon in aquarius it was a seed of love and of light right so all of the stuff that's being brought to the surface that needs to be purged is intricately related to what is being revealed with the Leo um, full moon. And this says, don't let pride get in your way. And the other manifesto that I had <laughs> back from 2018 was, and I had, I think I was talking about this on Patreon and I was dying laughing at myself because I was like, who does that? Like who writes whole manifestos? I literally wrote a whole manifesto because those of you who know, I used to study demonology back in the day when I was in the church and I did a whole manifesto on the spirit of pride, right? Which in demonology is the spirit of Leviathan, AKA the antichrist. Those of you who have the woke book, the little insert that I put in 2019 right? Talking about like Christ consciousness and stuff like that. Now I totally get why spirit said that, right? Because that's what's coming to the surface with the full moon in Leo. And that's what I was seeing in the Aquarius reading, but it's like, I wasn't sure how to verbalize it. So, and then I also realized that the reason why I was getting so irritated, because those of you who have worked with me like closely and people in my real life who know me, it's like, I discern spirits, right? And it's like, it's something about the spirit of like false piety and self-righteousness. You know what I mean? Just like the whole Leviathan complex. You know what I mean? Because like the whole, you know, spirit of pride is pretty much like, you know, the, the father of, uh, you know, like narcissism would be the extreme manifestation of it. But like I say, we all have narcissistic traits. So there's a level of pride that's healthy. But the thing that is dangerous with it and what I feel is being revealed here is like those insidious manifestations of pride. And to see what the different faces of that look like, those of you who have the woke book, look at 20, 2009, 2010, 
2016 and heavily in 2016 it shows you like you know how like false piety kind of shows up or for those of you who are biblically savvy it's in essence like the spirit of Pharisees. You know what I'm saying? It's like when you end up getting so blinded by your dogma or structure, which is what the empress, I mean the empress, the emperor in reverse is symbolic of. It's like a ritual, ritualistic structure or, you know, format or whatever that you get so stuck in that you lose sight of the essence or the true reason why you're doing it. You know what I mean? And this is like the same thing as maladaptive behaviors or, you know, maladaptive thought processes. Like I was saying with that thought reel, it's things that we do that were beneficial at one point in time, like with maladaptive behaviors, they kept you safe at one point in time. But like I was saying in the Aquarius reading, the threat is no longer here. So you still have an energetic cord to a past situation that's manifesting in your present. And that's inadvertently like what I said in the weekly reading with the death and the reverse card, something that's holding you back, that's done and over with. And that aligns with the past influence energy um, from Aquarius. But the whole thing is a seed of light has been implanted in us. And that seed of light is shining light on the shadow aspect of this pride energy that's been hiding inside of us. You know what I mean? So when I talked about self-sabotage, it's like, that's how it's manifesting. And it's like, dude, this gets so deep. Like we literally talked about all of this on Patreon a couple of weeks ago. And I know Anna was saying, um, this again for my biblically savvy people, um, it was, I can't remember what the exact scripture is, but y'all could totally Google it. But it was Paul talking about the thorn in his side, right? And he goes on to talk about like how, you know, like in essence, this pride spirit, the antichrist spirit, whatever you want to call it, how it infiltrated like the law and caused spiritual blindness with people. Like this is all the stuff that I'm seeing that's going on. But the whole reason why this is coming up, right, is because with the magician in reverse, it's disempowering you. So this even goes back to this consciousness card of how I was saying it's a neutral tool that you can utilize for good or for evil. So the thing that spirit is highlighting is that in a lot of ways, our creation energy, our consciousness, our awareness, in what ways we're utilizing it to put ourselves into bondage, right? And it's literally liberating you. So what we're doing in essence, we're still going through this process of things being revealed to us up until March because March is the month of like the collective rebirth. So like with spring and flowers bloom and things of the sort, I believe what the whole intention of all of this is, is for in March, you guys to see that transfiguration, to see that rebirth, to see that ultimate shift and manifestation of everything that you felt energetically that you would receive your harvest in so many words that you expected coming into 2020 from 2019. But it's understandable because again, going back to the is not is paradigm, we're still technically in the is not. And those of you who know, I always preach on this. The is not has to manifest before the is. However, when we are in the is not, whenever we uh, declare something, decree something, whenever we set an intention for something, the resistance that we receive after that or the manifestation of the is not is a testament that the is is on its way to you, right? Which goes into this message that I have, um, that I had for Aquarius in 2018. And for those of you that are interested in the whole in-depth look at all of this stuff, because, dude, I know I'm talking Buku has been 28 minutes, y'all. I'm legit glossing over this, but I'm going to do one webinar in accordance with all the other, because I didn't been convicted on that probably this whole year, y'all. Um, my Reiki course is coming. The Reiki certification course is coming. The value seminar is coming. Um, the, uh, I have another webinar that's about implementing changes that stick and how to do that in accordance with this one that's showing you how to allow Mercury retrograde to work in your favor in accordance with the woke book. And there's going to be several of those um, that I'm going to do in reference to the woke book, but 
um, again, using myself as an example, it's like I look at all of these things that I skipped, right? Which you skip will trip you up later, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the things that I skipped, but I'm seeing now that I needed this book to come to me. I needed the woke book to come to me because all of the stuff spirit was giving me, it wasn't making sense. I was just kind of like, what are we doing with all of this stuff? You know what I mean? But I'm seeing now how a lot of things that I've gotten, even years prior to this, it's like between pathology and the woke book, it's like everything is making sense because it's almost as if this is the vessel through which everything is being birthed in a sense. And I feel so the same for you guys, but just in a different form, because I feel this unrest, like this goes to that number two energy that I talked about in the woke book. And it goes into the number three energy and number two, meaning like February being the second month and three with March being the third month, because, um, I think that was 2010. No, it was 2009 when I talked about, um, like the primordial egg, you know what I mean? And it's like the rattling of an egg before it hatches and then the chick bursts out. Now, if you look at, you know, an egg, it's like the number three, three year, three month March, right? So that's what I feel all of this unrest is about. It's because it's the preparation for your rebirth, because I feel everyone who resonates with this, with me, whatever, I feel that this is a, a, a foretelling of your elevation. And I feel that everybody right now is in the doubt of that. I feel like you felt so sure about that before. And the energies, the is not, is throwing you kind of off track. But the key is, is to trust the process and stay on your path because you are headed there, right? It's just right now, it's like a test, but it's not really a test. This is really just the order or the process of manifestation. But, you know, as humans, we're used to the whole dyad aspect of things. So we consider it a test, but it's really not. It's just simply a process. But um, the little uh, channeled message that I did for Aquarius back in 2018, and this, again, not just Aquarius people, but this applies to everyone as of now. But um, the seed of intention was trusting the process, Right. And it's a little story and it says, once upon a time, you were a beautifully radiant, multicolored, one of a kind balloon that yearned to be adored. You were first given to an ungrateful child as a birthday gift. Unsatisfied with the flick of her wrist, you slipped through her fingers and were immediately lost to the will of the wind. Even though you were free to go with the flow, you felt a loss of control, as if you could only go where he decided to blow. Deep down, you yearned for a mainstay, your place. And one day, you found it, entangled amidst the branches of a tree, yet soon found this to be too restricting. Um, oh, I can't see anyone, and they can't see me, cried the balloon. And then suddenly, a precocious little boy spotted a collection of vibrant colors peeking through the leaves. He climbed up and carefully freed the balloon from the branches of the tree. The little boy took the balloon home and tied it to a beautifully complimentary balloon weight that both perfectly matched and both perfectly matched his 10th birthday cake. The balloon finally found its place in its perfect mate. It was not grounded enough to feel secure, yet still free enough to be itself. And just as the balloon had always wished, it was adored. Mantra, I am once in a lifetime. So the beautiful thing about this, right? Trusting the process and why this is so relevant right now for all of us. Like I'm just literally amazed by this, y'all. The whole relevance of this is exactly what I was saying that's happening here with this whole is not is. It's like the only thing this balloon wanted, the intention that was sent out, right? With this intention, do I hereby create? When the balloon, proverbially speaking, set that intention, he was setting the intention to be adored, right? The end goal was he was adored. 
But the process that took him to get there is he first was handed to someone who didn't appreciate him and let him slip through her fingers. Then home dude got stuck in a damn tree. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, well, you know, I'm stable. You know, the branches are holding me down. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, nobody can see me. I can't be adored. It's like, I have security. I have stability. But it's like, this isn't really what I asked for. You know what I mean? And I look at it like that with us in life. It's like, I feel a lot of you are kind of, you've been through that phase of, you know, having something or someone who didn't appreciate you. And now it's like being in a state where you have something and it's like, it may be, it's like 80, 20, it's 20% of what you wanted, but 80% is not. It's like, I should be grateful for this. I mean, it's a tree, you know, the tree is holding me with the leaves and stuff like that, but it's not what it is that you want. You know what I mean? And what I feel this is stressing is that you have the right to have what it is that you want. What you, your heart's desires, they can be fulfilled, right? And ultimately this little boy sees him, brings him down and puts him in his rightful place to where he's balanced now. He's not floating around. He's not completely held down. He has a nice little balloon weight, you know, where they get to do their thing. The weight gets to be the weight. The balloon gets to be the balloon. And he fits in, in his ideal space. He's adored, he's appreciated, and he's balanced, right? And I feel that's where everyone is ultimately headed in March. However, there's steps to the process. There's work that needs to be done. But like I say, my approach to everything is very practical. It's incorporating, you know, psychology, spirituality, you know, astrology, numerology. It's taking all of these different facets and applying them in a very practical way to your life in service to you. You know what I mean? Because it's the same process that I used for myself. So I know it works. You know what I'm saying? So the whole thing is, dude... I'm going to extend this, like not an extended reading, God forbid. <laughs> this isn't even a reading. It's just me talking like with my invisible, beautiful mind wall. It's all connected. But anyway, but this is going to grow into an entire process. I hope that this helps y'all because dude, like when I tell you I'm literally in awe, like since last night, I barely slept last night because I've literally been, been in awe of how all of this interconnects and like how, I don't know, me talking to you guys, talking about this on Patreon, like creating these things and me still being humbled in the fact that as I'm, I'm just doing what I'm being told to do, like whatever I'm led to do, I just do it. I don't really think about it too hard or like what the intricacies of this are. It's like, hey, spirit is saying do this. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm probably going to question it. I'm probably going to fact check it, but it's like, whatever, let's do it. You know what I mean? But it's like seeing this all come together literally puts me in awe, but I'm also humbled and I'm honored in the fact that, you know, just having information and resources that can help you guys, like, that humbles me so much because, you know, and this is a little segue, but I mean, those of you who know um, about my journey, like like my, my whole growth process, it's like I went literally over a decade on this journey, not knowing anyone that was going through what I was going through, stepping completely out of the uh, fold of, you know, what my family knew traditionally what was considered upright to me, all based on a voice in my head telling me like, and I don't mean that in like an auditory hallucination sense, but it's like literally spirit telling me something and me sensing something is wrong or off and being led to go in another direction when externally there's nothing wrong with where I was or what I was doing. But it's like, it's like I'm being called here and it takes so much courage to do that. You know what I mean? To to leave a whole life behind and to have people turn their back on you. And I've had to spend like an exuberant, exuberant, there we go, exuberant. My Southern mouth is kicking in. Amount of hours in libraries, like researching and, and reading, trying to make sense of what's happening. And it's literally an honor to me to take, like I don't feel any of those years of my process were ever a waste 
because I take all of this information, like I did the footwork and the hard work and I just get to package it and hand it to people. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's the thing that's a blessing to me, to be able to speak into your life and say things that resonate with you or to give you confirmation for something that you're feeling or that you're going through. It's like, that's literally a gift within itself to me. So I'm in awe and I'm excited about this and I'm going to kind of, you know, spread this out um most importantly into this whole um mercury retrograde thing for you guys to be like i don't know that is not the appropriate word for that i literally just heard a little kim in my head and i was like that was definitely a guy that was not spirit that said that but moving right along <laughs> But um, to give you guys the information and the tools so that you're prepared to really like slay this in accordance with all these energies and everything. So I think that's it. I mean, it's literally not it. That is probably the the baseline just, just, just of everything that I wanted to say. But I don't want to talk you guys to death because like I said, it's been 40 minutes now. But um, but if you guys are interested in that, those of you who are already on the list, because when you go on my website at the very bottom, there's a list um, underneath like pathology and the stuff for the woke book. Those of you who are already on that list, you're good. Those of you, because I still have the list from the Reiki course, all of you that are still on the list from the Reiki course, you're good. All of you who are on the list for the value webinar, you're good. Everyone who's on the woke book list, you're good. I have all of your information already. So as these start to come out, I'm going to be shooting out those emails for you guys to register. Um, I found out recently, because a lot of people were really mad <laughs> when I opened up personal readings and they were saying they never got the email. And I found out with Gmail, um, with me sending out mass emails, I look like spam. <laughs> Add me to your address book. But um, I found out most of my emails end up on Gmail under people's uh, promotions tab. So it's like at the top, like you have your inbox. It's like another tab. And the last one says promotions. If you put in, uh, you know, either she do or the woke therapist, you're probably going to find every single email I've ever sent you, which really isn't going to be that many. Um, and for those of you who use other email services, it would be under your junk mail. So to prevent it from catching it up, add me to your address book and check in there. But as the, you know, registration dates and everything are coming up, I'll be sending that out to you guys. If you're not on those lists, um, you don't have to join the other ones. If you don't want to, you could just go ahead and join the one that's on the main page of my site and I'll keep you guys updated. But, uh, yeah, man. I think that's it. I mean, I feel personally, this for me is like a seed because I've, I've sensed with my channel, um, things were been supposed to change, but once again, y'all, you know, I got free will. So, I mean, like how this came out in the Aquarius reading, that was part of, well, majority of the reason why I feel spirit led me with this whole pathology system because I felt like that's something that's more interconnected because there's so many times on my channel, like with the 12 Zodiac signs, I understand we use them as classification, but I feel it's a disservice to the collective and the fact that there's so much really great information in each of those signs. But a lot of people will never watch another sign if it's not in their chart. You know what I mean? Um, there's a lot of people who are led to them still intuitively, but it's a lot of really great information that is practically applicable to your life that I really feel, I mean, man, that could help so many people out. But I know it's like so exhaustive of looking at, you know, 12 videos, especially how long my damn videos are. I got a long ass video. I ain't even got no damn cards. You know what I'm saying? So I am long winded people. But, um, but it's just the simple fact that uh, that system was more inclusive, you know, and I feel that it's a, it's it sucks that um, there's a lot of really great information that's missed out on. And, you know, I've really been in prayer about that, of, of how it is I want to um, move forward, because my main thing is just like education, y'all. I, I stress that so much. It's like I read tarot, but I don't I don't consider myself a tarot reader per se. I mean, by definition, yes. But it's like 
my truest intention, my my calling, like my vocation, my purpose for being here, it's not to read tarot cards. You know what I mean? It's literally all of the information that comes out in between the tarot cards. You know what I mean? I could tell you all day long what's going on in your life, but it's like, that's not my mission. My mission is not to tell you just what's going on with you. It's telling you how to revolutionize your life, how to revolutionize yourself and how to live the life that you deserve. The one that you elected to live when you picked your birth chart and all these other little intricacies about yourself and whatnot or whatever. But anywho, my Gemini rising is really on fleek right now. So I'm going to go ahead and shut myself down so I can go ahead and get the rest of these videos out. However, they're going to come out. Not really sure how we're moving forward from here. I got to talk to the boss, but thank you for watching this. I love your freaking face and I will see you guys sooner than later. Deuces.